behind me is a sawmill that I built a few years ago. I've been using an Alaskan mill for many years, but ever since I built this thing, uh, I've just been so happy, never have to sit on my knees ever again when sawmilling. My head is usually filled with a lot of grand ideas most of the time. And one day I got the idea to rebuild this sawmill and make it better. But just as I was wrapping things up, life took us on a completely different path. Uh, leaving this sawmill uh, unfinished for a little over a year. Of course, that's a story all on its own. And uh, I think it needs to be told just to bring some perspective into all of this. So now the time has finally come for me to uh, wrap this thing up and tell you the story of uh, how I built it and uh, why I built it. And also just my journey through woodworking, which is my passion and purpose in life. And of course, we're going to find out if uh, my idea had any merit to it or if maybe I was just spending a lot of time and money for nothing. <laughs> I need to rewind all the way back to 2013. We had just bought our first house and it was a big undertaking. I was 24 years old and Fia was 21. Now we had absolutely no idea about what we had gotten ourselves into. We just thought it was a cool house that we got for a fair price. And sure, it was really cool, but we were in for a lot of work. And it's not like we didn't know it when we bought it. That was kind of the appeal of it all. But if you've never renovated an old house before, then you don't really know how much effort is required. Now that particular house was built in the early 1900s. And it had four bedrooms, two dining areas, hallways, lounges, and seven fireplaces and everything needed fixing. The total living space was 277 square meters or roughly 3000 square feet. On the property was a two car garage and when I say garage I really mean more of a shack and it too needed a lot of work. So what does this have to do with the sawmill? Uh, well, nothing really, other than that I started building it as we were moving out of the house. But there's more to this story, so just bear with me. And why this story matters is because during this time of working on the house is when I developed my interest in woodworking. At the time and to this day, my day job is at a steel mill, working as a machine operator. It might sound a little bit interesting, but it really isn't. But on the weekends when I got to work on the house, my hands would do all the work and the wood would become the symbol of my creativity. And so I was hooked. I remember at that time I came across a YouTube video of a guy uh, using an Alaskan mill. And it was just one of those eye-opening moments. Um, it really lit a fire in me. Just that one guy with a chainsaw and a fairly simple jig was able to produce this uh, beautiful lumber that in my head uh, it was only possible with the use of heavy machinery or, you know, industrial scale sized stuff. Uh, but it just looked so simple. And so I just saved up some money and I bought myself a brand new steel 661 and the Granberg Alaskan Mill. This was hands down the coolest thing I had ever owned. And I honestly thought I was going to be a millionaire doing this. It was so simple. Just cut a tree down and slice it up. hardwood lumber was expensive and I would measure how much I milled in a day and compare that to the retail price of the species I was cutting and usually it amounted to a lot of money. Of course I had no idea at that time that the wood need to be dried in a kiln to a stable moisture content, sterilized and all that for it to be worth those prices. So I just kept milling, thinking that this was going to be my way of finally quitting my day job and starting business. I was wrong, kind of. Uh, it turns out uh, saw milling is very profitable. Uh, it's just that uh, doing it with a very simple jig and a chainsaw might not be the most uh, sustainable in the long run. It wears you out fairly quickly. Anyway, back to the story. Just 
hang in there. We're almost at the point where I build this sawmill. So I was milling all this great lumber and I always felt a bit sad when I thought about selling it. Whenever I cut up a nice log, I would always picture a nice piece of furniture I wanted to build with the wood. I figured why sell the wood when I can make more profit on each slab by turning it into furniture and that's when I started buying woodworking machines and began fixing up that old garage that we had. I gave it a new roof, poured a concrete floor, put up some interior walls and that became my workshop. After a little while I had acquired a vintage planer with a capacity of 70 centimeters or 25 inches and I also bought a lot of metalworking tools, um, a welder, cross-cutting bandsaw, grinders and such and I used that to build my own logging trailer because the logs I was milling was getting bigger and I had to move them around with my little tractor. Some other things that I had to build that wasn't really available commercially at that time was a router sled and that was kind of my mindset. If I needed a machine and it was something that I could build myself then I, I would at least try it. So now we're at the point where I developed a uh, kind of a tool purchasing uh, condition you might say. So each month I would just try and uh, save, save as much money as I could and uh, whatever was left uh, of my paycheck at the end of the month I would use to uh, fuel my tool purchasing addiction and the next month for the next year. <laughs> so now we're close but you can uh, clearly see a linear progression here and uh, which made me realize that the next obvious step up would be to uh, have a stationary mill and by this time I had milled so much lumber with my Alaskan mill that you know the initial site excitement was just it wasn't there anymore and I knew that what I was doing wasn't the most ergonomical thing and so I started looking at uh, different sawmills uh, maybe I could purchase a Lucas mill or something along those lines or a larger band sawmill but as soon as I looked it up I knew that was way out of my price range and so the most logical step uh, was to build one. I looked at a bunch of sawmills um, that was commercially available. I did the design for my sawmill in SketchUp and once I was happy with that I then uh, went ahead and bought all the materials I needed and then I got to work. This would be my final project in that garage because as I was getting all the parts fabricated, we were also selling the house. All of the remodeling uh, was just finished. Uh, we got to live there for perhaps uh, not even a year, I think, after we had done all the remodeling. And during all that time, it had become obvious that this house wasn't really what we wanted. Of course, we had mixed feelings. Uh, we spent all of this effort in making it our own and we really loved the house. We both wanted a property with lots of land and I desperately needed a bigger workshop as I was determined to turn my hobby into a business. The markets were in our favor, the house sold pretty much instantly and as luck would have it I found a good sized workshop for rent at that same time. So we packed it up and we moved into an apartment in the city. And this is when things really started progressing for me. Uh, I had found my creative space and things was just uh, rolling, I guess. First order of business was to get this sawmill put together. It came together pretty easy and within a couple of days, I was cutting my first big slab of wood. It was basically a chainsaw mill in a larger format. I would still use my 661, but it was bolted to the platform which I would raise and lower depending on what thickness I was cutting. The whole frame would then ride on the track and I used a manual winch to pull it through the log and it felt awesome. I was cutting huge slabs with minimum effort and I had already built a kiln and pretty soon I was making money. This is really when the fun started. Uh, I started buying huge logs and cut them up on the sawmill and I used the wood to uh, build furniture that people was buying. And Fia joined the business as well and we got to work together uh, every other week. 
It was now the summer of 2019. Fia and I were having lunch together, and she asked me a question I will never forget. How do you feel about becoming a dad? It was a surreal moment, only surpassed by the even more surreal moment our daughter was born. So that's really a life-changing moment. Um, but what happened during those nine months that she was pregnant? weeks after learning she was pregnant, we put the winning bid on a new property. It was perfect. 37 acres of land, a small but very cute house, and an 1800 square foot workshop. And of course, it all needed tons of work, uh, but our future at least was secured. It was October 2019, and I was closing the shop basically, uh, preparing to move all of my stuff. And this time there were tons of stuff to get moved, uh, not just basic tools. Uh, now I had heavy machines and piles and piles of logs, lumber, just a whole bunch of heavy, heavy things. And just counting all the logs, that's, um, I think it was somewhere in the range of 80 uh, metric tons or something. I, just a, <laughs> a lot of stuff. Everything went pretty smoothly and since I wasn't taking on any work, I figured I'd upgrade this sawmill. I documented most of it and you can find those videos on my channel. They show in detail what went into this upgrade. But in short, uh, my idea came from talking with the former president of Logosol about using two of their electric motors to power the sawmill. We were super excited about this idea, but I never got to completely finish before I had to pack all my stuff up and uh, move to our new place. And it took almost three months to move everything. And now it felt like we had to start over, in a sense. And my new workshop needed a complete makeover. It was basically just a shell, just like my old garage. It needed windows, interior walls, insulation, electrical, new trusses, uh, you name it. And of course, everything in the original house also needs a, a pretty decent makeover as well. And so we immediately began building an addition, a new bathroom and laundry room. And we also need a little bit more living space and trying to survive it all while simultaneously taking care of our newborn. But we're finally seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, just a few days ago, we put the paint on the exterior walls on the new addition. It still needs a little bit more work, but most of the heavy work is, uh, is done. It's just time for the final little finish. So it's been a stressful year to say the least. Um, 2020 has just been a crazy year overall. And um, as you can imagine, finishing this sawmill just got put way down on the list of priorities. But I'm happy to say that during all of this chaos and yeah chaos is the accurate word here um, i actually managed to sneak in a few hours of work here and there um, first in uh, march sometime during march i uh, actually finished the raise and lower all the components and um, later in august uh, this year i finally put that stuff together so ju let's just take a look at that I'm finishing up the last few parts that will raise and lower the saw head. I would have got this whole thing finished before we moved if I hadn't made a decision to rebuild this particular mechanism.
baby woke up early at about 5 10 this morning and uh, wouldn't go back to sleep so might as well get up early and start the day and gonna go start doing some more work on the sawmill the threaded rod that's gonna go on there and this is the bearing that's gonna get bolted up to the top there and so here's the nut and it's been welded to a square tube and these are some spacers and this whole thing is gonna get welded to the side of the beam basically what I need to do is make sure that the level of the beam uh, each end uh, has to be the exact same distance from the top down on both sides so yeah need to make sure that this is all lining up right now so I got that straight edge up there I can use that as a reference on both sides Do it on the inside. 53.3 Okay, so we got this motor turning this sprocket that's connected with the chain to the other side. The chain tensioner is what keeps everything in check. <laughs> Hopefully now, these two threaded rods will turn in unison and this thing will either go up or down. I do not know which way is what right now, so we'll just see what happens. There. <laughs> I think it actually moves. All right, let's go. <laughs> Making a few noises here and there. It actually works. Oh, it down. It's amazing. And I know it looks like it's going really slowly. This is the final push. There's so little work left to do now. I'm dialing everything in, tweaking some stuff here and there. 
just to make sure everything will operate as it should. But it's not moving fast enough and a winner is catching up on me now. I just have to see this sawmill running before the worst of winter gets here or I will surely lose my mind.